Dr. Willis, thank you very much for inviting us down. Very kind of you to bring us in today to your surgery. You're very welcome. Why don't you tell us a bit about your practice and the community that you serve? Yeah, so uh, we're a sort of mixed community. We have an excess of the elderly uh, compared to the average. Um, so we obviously see quite a lot of degenerative joint disease. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You mentioned degenerative joint changes, things that perhaps you would see more in a, a, an elderly population. Does it comprise a, a large part of your, of your sort of complaints that people come in with? Well, I think it does for any GP and um, possibly I see a little bit more because we do slightly, slightly specialised. I think probably like a lot of old-fashioned doctors, I'm pretty anti the word protocol, etc. And um, I think if you're a, a skilled professional, you treat people very much um, according to training and also according to... Um, you know what they want uh, you know so we try and be very patient-centered we try not just just to dish out the pills mm -hmm. um, to, so, so for example um, you know there's a big problem in the UK with people giving too much um, strong painkilling medication for uh, musculoskeletal pain mm -hmm. uh, and it's not very helpful and it's, and it's rather harmful so um, so we much prefer to treat specifically with injections, physiotherapy. Has that helped in your practice, um, using topical injections for joint degeneration problems? Well, I, I think they're a big help. I mean, obviously, um, degenerative knees are you know, incredibly common, almost universal, mm -hmm. and um, especially with the um, obesity epidemic that we've got, it's becoming more and more of a problem. There are a lot of patients who are not bad enough for uh, knee replacement surgery, but who are, have significant pain and disability. Mm -hmm. and, and I find that if you can give someone a treatment which helps them for several months at a time, um, that's a huge benefit. Does it uh, seem to provide a, a, a quite a long temporal effect in terms of the symptomatic control? Um, yeah, I, I would say most patients um, benefit for I mean, nine months would be a pretty typical mm -hmm. length of time, um, some a little bit shorter, but um, compared, for example, to steroid injections, which often have a very disappointing um, time course. So the patient says after, with steroids, we're after one month, oh, I'm great doctor, but s after six or seven weeks, they're back where they started. So um, that, that's the big... Uh, advantage about uh, viscous supplementation is that uh, you know patients come back and they say oh doctor I think I need another injection and they say when when was the last one and you look back and you know it's it's nine months or sometimes longer mm -hmm. um, you know and they say oh gosh that's good. In terms of the the national guidelines the frameworks around yes. these type of interventions yes. I understand there's been a number of changes recently that have either made it slightly more difficult to obtain these type of topical injection therapies or in some areas of the UK there's been certain restrictions placed on physicians even using them. Uh, is this something that uh, you've encountered uh, here in your surgery? Yes, we have. The local CCG um, became very... Uh, tried to become very strict about this and um, to, to stop us using them. Uh, they've also refused to fund hospitals um, using this treatment. So, so specialists now say I th to the patient, I think this is a good treatment, but I can't do it for you. You'll have to go back and see your GP, which obviously is um, a rather bizarre um, situation when, mm -hmm. when the guy who's actually more experienced that in the knee joint says to the patient that they have to go back to see me to have the treatment. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have had quite a lot of difficulty. Uh, at the moment we have a sort of uh, uneasy truce where um, as long as the numbers don't go up too much, they're sort of um, tolerating the situation. Is there an issue around patients, for instance, where you may think that uh, an arthroplasty is appropriate but they may be too ill for instance to undergo uh, surgery I mean. absolutely there, there are so there's a lot of high-risk patients around there are a lot of patients who where the 
the orthopedic specialist very reasonably says, hmm, yeah, um, a successful knee replacement would be good for you, but the, um, you know, the, the mortality risk is two, three, four, five percent in your group. Um, you know, go away and think about it. And the patient comes back to us and says, Doc, can you do something else? In, in that situation then, where you've got a topical intervention that seems uh, and has been demonstrably proved to be effective clinically, um, would it make sense perhaps for those types of patients that this should be a, at least a considered option? I mean, I think it definitely would. Obviously, um, you appreciate that I'm one practice and there's maybe and maybe the only practice in our particular CCG, um, you know, there are, there are very few GPs who are offering this service. And um, yeah, I, I think that both for patients who are high risk for surgery and patients who are not bad enough for surgery, um, there's a huge need for this sort of treatment to be more available to patients. So I, I suppose in summary, from your clinical perspective, you would find that the concepts are, and, and indeed the, the, the option of having a therapeutic visco supplement as a, an everyday remedy almost, if you needed it, it was there to draw upon, you would think that that would be a, a beneficial thing in terms of the health of, of your patients. Absolutely, yeah, because it's a very, very common clinical problem mm -hmm. and we need an everyday treatment. We know that obviously you had injection treatment in your left knee mm -hmm. previously, which you had some benefit from. Some, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so we thought really that your right knee was very knee. similar uh, yeah. severity, mm -hmm. um, and at the moment you're managing to work uh, in yeah. the kitchen. Although I've reduced my hours, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. And you, the things you have difficulty with at the moment are... Well, it, it's when I've been sitting for a while and getting yeah. up and until you gain, you know, your momentum and what have you, you know, it's, it's you know, stiffening up and things like that, yeah. And how far can you walk comfortably? Mm. I don't know really, it depends whether it's a good day or a bad day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, not but it is a problem. Would, yeah, it is, definitely. Yes. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't set out and go for a walk purposely, if that's what you mean, no. Sure. And you told me a bit about stairs, I think. Yeah, so. I tend to crawl upstairs on all fours. Right. And when yeah. you're at work, you use... I use the lift. You use the lift. Yeah, okay. always. So, yeah. so, so there, there is quite a sort of degree of disability yeah. there, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so if we can get something which enables you to, to walk more easily and have less pain, mm -hmm. and Definitely. We, can, we can get something where you can get out of a chair yeah. more easily... Yeah. Uh, that would be a big benefit. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I, th I think we explained that one of the things that goes wrong with the worn joint is that the, um, the fluid in the knee loses some of its sort of lubricating properties and that the, yeah. the, the, the cartilage um, isn't as well sort of nourished. You basically get a sort of runny mixture. You're, you're, mm -hmm. you're sort of, it's a bit like the oil degrading in the car. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so replacing this uh, substance, which mm. is which is as close as you can get to the natural um, sort of lubrication that you have in a in a healthy knee, yeah. um, that that's really what we're trying to do. Uh, and I think we discussed before that um, in general it's a very safe treatment. Mm -hmm. There's a very small risk of people getting allergic reactions to it, mm -hmm. less than one in a hundred. Uh, and there is a there is a very very tiny risk of us doing you harm by um, mistakenly introducing a germ into your knee. Right. So that's one in several thousand. But mm -hmm. you know, it's not something that's ever happened here. But um, mm -hmm. we do have to warn you that that's yeah. those are possibilities. Um, are you happy to take that take those small risks? Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah. We do we do like you to stay. You know not do too much immediately straight away afterwards. Mm. So we're just uh, cleaning the bugs off the skin, uh, Denise, so uh, okay. we'll just do that. We've just got to let it dry. So you just have to let your leg hang just nice and the more sort of relaxed and floppy you can be as far as your legs are concerned, the better, okay? 
Okay, just relax. So you just feel the pressure now, okay? All right, all done. And then you just press gently there, okay?